Hi guys, it's Scott here, and today we're having a look at the NSP software, and more specifically, the navigation tree. The Haltech NSP software has been around for a little while now. It supports all of the Nexus platform ECUs, and more recently, now supports the Elite series platform. Because of that, I wanted to do a bit of an intro into the navigation tree and show you how this system works because it is a little bit different to what we were used to with the Elite and the ESP software. But things are changing, we need to get with the times and we need to go through and get familiar with this layout. Please stick with me, please update your Elite Series ECU to get the super fast comm speed and all the extra functionality. It's not that scary. We really have gone through and tried to make it feel really, really familiar, but there are a couple of little changes that I'd like to go through and sort of show you where things are. The most important thing, there's no main menu anymore. Within the NSP software, all the navigation is done by the navigation tree down the left-hand side here. So I'll close this up and the first thing we'll do is we'll click on the very top one. This is the engine management system that we're using. This is the software and the firmware version that we're using, and this is the serial number. Down the right hand side here, we've got notes for the current firmware that are in the ECU. So these are all of the updates that were done for this particular unit in the version three software. So every time that you do a firmware update on your ECU, this is gonna tell you all of the extra things that have been added in the firmware update that you went up to. Now, this is the part where it gets a little bit different. When we were in the Elite Series ECU, we used to go to the main setup page, then we would go through and click on all of the different tabs in order to set the engine up. Here, a little bit different. We go into the tree, and I click on the heading for the tree, engine configuration. Looking a little bit familiar, because we've kept the same page layout, because we're all really familiar with these page layouts, we know where everything sits, difference is now, that we're configuring these things in these tuning screens on the right hand side. I go down through here on the right hand side and I'll go to trigger system. Similar page layout again, so we know where everything is on that page, but everything is in the tree now. So if I cruise down and click on our trigger system, then I can configure our fuel system, then our ignition system. That's that whole F4 page that we're familiar with, now in one page layout, we can tab through it, makes everything nice and easy, and you kind of do it in order from the top to the bottom. Next, sensors. This used to be in a tab and that used to be that huge list there. So we can go through and we can click through any of the sensors to turn them on and off. I might go through here and I could turn an EGT on. I could turn on a wideband sensor. I could turn anything I like on. Um, Probably not for this video, but up the top here, you'll just notice that I've turned on some functions and this light up here has just started flashing. Device reboot required. So I can click there to reset the ECU. Now those changes are made. So a nice easy way to know that the ECU needs a reboot after a significant change. Control F12 also does that. Similar hotkeys to what we had with the ESP software so that you don't have to relearn a whole bunch of new hotkeys. We can also do things a little bit differently there. So instead of clicking on sensors and then reading through the countless different sensors that are there, I might wanna use the search feature and I might wanna add, let's say an oil pressure sensor. So I could search for oil pressure. There we go, under sensors, oil pressure comes up. It's grayed out, meaning that it's not in use. I could just right click on it there and go right click, enable oil pressure, no problem. Wiring comes up red, okay? It's come up red because it's not assigned, okay? So I'll go edit, I'll assign it to this input, double click, done. No more red anywhere telling me that everything's configured correctly. Up the top, the reset button's flashing, okay? Reset it, and she's away. It's as simple as that to configure our oil pressure sensor. I'll do another one, let's say our fuel pressure sensor. Up the top, I type in fuel to use the search function. A lot more search results on fuel, so I might add a fuel pressure, fuel temperature, fuel composition sensor, a fuel flow sensor. We'll make it simple, we'll go fuel pressure, right click, enable, wiring, edit, I'll choose AVI 5, analog voltage input 5 as the one that it's wired to. Done, reset ECU. But that fuel pressure sensor I've just configured, okay, 
the calibration for that sensor and the setup for that sensor. Let's go through and have a look. So I'll click on fuel pressure. There we go. There's our calibration. I could load a different calibration from our save configuration files or I'll leave that one. Pretty common calibration. Display. Display minimum, zero. Display maximum, uh, 150 PSI because that's the maximum for the calibration that we've chosen. Diagnostics. So we could set P codes or we could set so diagnostic trouble codes to come on over our OBD scanner or we could set engine protection based on if the voltage is too low, the voltage is too high, if the fuel pressure differential is too great, we can make it go into some type of a limp mode. Then back to the wiring tab. So again, this is more of a software walkthrough, not so much specifically on each individual sensor or each or, or engine protection or anything like that. I'm going to come out of the search feature up the top, X. Okay, now we've gone through, we've added all our sensors. Then fuel tuning. One of the parts that is tricky up the top there, clicking on the heading for each of these things, the heading actually has things behind it. So once we click on fuel tuning, we can now decide how we want to tune the engine. We can configure what maps need to be turned on. We can configure what type of fuel it's got. Uh, interestingly, just next to you, if I highlight over the top of here within the NSP software, the little blue question mark, if I click on this, little help menu. So that helps us while we're in these screens. We have a full online help as well that's within the software, but nice little tips. If you're just not quite sure, just hover across the top of some of them. The little blue one, that'll help you out and let you know what's going on. If we come on down, we've got all of our ignition system settings as well in the tree. And if I click over the top of ignition tuning, this is where we can set our lock timing values. We can set what the ignition timing is based against. We can turn on particular tables. If we cruise down here under corrections for ignition tuning, and if I click on corrections, that's a whole new menu. So that's where we would turn all of our corrections on and off for ignition timing. If I come back up here for fuel, same thing. If I click on that heading, that's where I'll find all of those things to be able to turn them on and off. These used to be under the main setup and then a fuel tab. And there used to be a whole bunch of tabs and everything that you would go through and pick from. Now it's a little bit simpler because everything under fuel is just in the one tree. Likewise, if I cruise down, I've got engine functions. If I click over the top of engine functions, that shows me everything that's there and that's available. Under electrical, same thing. Then if I come through to transmission, same thing. So basically what's happening is as I'm scrolling down, I'm turning things on as I need them and making it nice and simple. And you'll notice that the trees start to get bigger and bigger as we start turning on and off all the functions. To access the help menu from the software, it's also really easy. Let me cruise all the way back up the top here to say engine configuration. On the right hand side, little question mark. If I click on that, toggles the help menu on, then that's gonna tell me everything I need to know about the table that we're in there. If I click on trigger system, it's gonna give me all the trigger system information. So that's gonna help me with better descriptions or more in depth descriptions than the little blue question mark in the map here. I'll toggle that off for a moment. The next thing that I wanna have a look at is the favorites. So that's the bit right up the top here. Now, the favorites are the things that you're accessing all the time while you're tuning the car. So let me say, for example, I'll cruise down here and say target lambda table. If I right click on target lambda, go add to favorites, then all of a sudden, the target lambda table is up there under favorites. So that means that instead of having to open the whole fuel tuning tab, tab, I might just want to come up here and I want to look at the base fuel, the base ignition, target boost pressure, and the target lambda table. This might be a nice shortcut while you're tuning a car, or you might want to set a laptop up for a customer or for a fellow racer, and they only want to look at their target drive shaft and target boost curve while they're at the track. So instead of having looked through all the different stuff, you just go to my favorites, and pick whichever one you wanna look at. Another thing I really like about the tree is the ability to drop and drag things from the left-hand side across to our tables. I'm just gonna come over here and I'm gonna left click on ignition base. I'm gonna drag it across. There we go. There's my ignition base table. Then I might want my base fuel table. I'll left click and I'll drag my fuel base. 
I might want to drag my fuel cranking table possibly over as well. So I can have a whole bunch of text views on the one page and all I need to do is drop and drag them across. I could come over here and go right click, then I could find a text view, then I could select the fuel uh, post start and get the same method, but nice and easy to drop and drag them across. I'll skip back from my test page now down to transmission or vehicle functions. This is where we would set up our launch control, our traction control, our anti-lag, our rally anti-lag, our torque management, our race timer, all that stuff is in there. Uh, our generics, so our generic inputs, our generic outputs, our generic timers, we can configure all of that stuff there. Our generic channels are there now as well, which is a really nice thing. We've got all of the Haltech CAN system. So this is where we would configure it for CAN based uh, wideband controllers or thermocouple amplifiers, or if you wanna get the CAN communications in from your dyno, this is where we would turn that on and off. Our vehicle CAN system is here as well. So we could configure the second CAN network on a Elite 2500, for example, to communicate with one of uh, several different factory CAN car systems now. So that'll display and make a dash work for a RX-8 with a 2J, or it'll make a uh, Falcon dashboard work when it's in a Nissan Patrol or whatever the case. Uh, cruising down, this is where we set up the data logging here. So this is where we set up the number of channels that we're logging and how the logging starts and stops. And then down the very bottom here, Haltech CAN supported dash. So that's telling us now that I've got a CAN supported dash enabled. Um, if we had a thermocouple amplifier or a wideband or uh, another Haltech device connected, this is where all of those devices will be listed out. So at a glance, you can see exactly what's set up and what's configured over CAN with this particular installation. Now, keeping in mind, I'm doing all of this online with a live ECU, but if you don't have an ECU there or you're contemplating getting an engine management system or you just don't wanna go online and muck around with your own car, don't worry, download the NSP software for free straight off our website. If you go to file and then new, you're not gonna see live data popping up because you're not online with a real engine management system, but it's a full working copy of the software. So that means that you can go through, you can configure things, you can manipulate all of the tables, you can get familiar with the software before you either jump into a Nexus series ECU or before you update your Elite series ECU to use the Nexus software. Well, that's it for the navigation tree overview. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. My name's Scott, catch you next time.